Here are 15 useful fitness facts that can help you on your fitness journey. Before we get started, drop your favorite fitness fact down below in the comments. Onto the video. Fitness fact number one, cortisol is good. Cortisol has been given a bad rap because it is the stress hormone. However, it's used to get us up in the morning, increase protein breakdown, and is used when working out. It's one of those things that everyone wants zero of, but in reality, we need at least a little bit of it to survive. And it's really one of those things that are actually beneficial, but just works in the background. Exercise is an antidepressant. So with exercise comes a release of endorphins, a group of hormones secreted by the brain, in turn, which make you feel pretty good. Strength training speeds up your metabolism. So with an increase in lean muscle mass leads to an increase in your resting metabolic rate or RMR for short, meaning you are burning more calories doing nothing for free. And who doesn't want to burn off some free calories? Aside from all my skinny homies with an ultra fast metabolism, visualization can lead to better workouts. Mental imagery is a total game changer. This has been shown to be effective with rehab and the military, sports, and so on. Think about using all of your senses for a lift. In this case, we'll use bench press as the example. First off, our visual sense. Where are your eyes going to be? Where are you looking during your bench press? Is the bar directly above your eyes? How far out is your hand placement? How close is your hand placement? Auditory. What are you hearing around you? Do you hear a loud crowded gym? Do you hear maybe metal plates clinging? Touch. Maybe you're feeling the rough parts of the bar, the rings on the bar to where to place your fingers. You're really just feeling the bar. Pause. Maybe you still taste the pre-workout that you drank on the way to the gym. Smell. Do you smell rubber? Do you smell metal? Does your gym's AC have a certain scent to it? Think about all of that. And even down to the imagery of the kinesthetics or movement of the lift meaning the route that the bar is going to take when it comes off your chest, where the bar is being placed on the eccentric, and maybe even squeezing at the top of the rep or bending the bar with your hands as you're going up to keep your back locked in place. If you are enjoying the video or if you have found this video useful, please be sure to drop a like down below. Exercise increases memory. Essentially what this does is stimulate the growth of new brain cells and helps prevent age-related decline. Super compensation. So this is a fancy way of saying you come back stronger than before. This could be after a hard periodization phase where you were either overreaching or even maybe overtraining or even just an injury in general. It is essentially your body's ability to bounce back after this, which can lead you to either come back just as strong as before or possibly even stronger than before. So don't stress it if you need to take some time off and let your body recover from the gym. Your body's got you. Higher self-esteem. The more you lift, the more you start to see some sort of progress, whether it is through strength or through your body, visually. This makes you feel stronger and more powerful, and this in turn increases your self-worth. Plus, you're progressing with something to work towards, so it gives you that sense of achievement. Cholesterol is good. Now hold up, let me explain myself. LDL, short for low density lipoprotein, is the bad cholesterol. This is the one on those Cheerio boxes that say they're trying to lower it. And this LDL is the main source for buildup and blockage in the arteries. HDL is the good cholesterol. It takes cholesterol to the liver, which could then be used by the body or excreted altogether. Anything is better than nothing. Whether this is yoga, powerlifting, bodybuilding, swimming, hula hooping, boxing, or just any sort of sports in general. Any of those things are better than nothing. And keep in mind, each of these will yield different results, but these are all much better than doing nothing at all. You cannot spot reduce fat. Now, no matter what those ads or other clickbait that you see, this is false. These little side crunches aren't going to help you lose those love handles. A lower body fat percentage achieved through essentially moving more and eating less will. And keep in mind, fat is stored differently from person to person. So some people might have much more fat in their love handles. Other people might store it in their thighs and so on. This is sort of just where your pre-genetic disposition comes into play. Strength training increases balance. As you get older, you naturally lose balance. And this is important because falling is the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries among older adults ages 65 and over. Sometimes a lack of strength can lead to a fall and further injury. This can lead to major declines in quality of life and they might be more susceptible to either injuring themselves again or at least putting themselves at a higher risk and they might be even more susceptible to death because of this. 
walking burns more fat. Now this might seem confusing because you think the harder you're working out, the more fat you're burning. There's this thing called this respiratory exchange ratio where the higher intensity that you're putting out there tends to utilize carbs more and the lower intensity you're putting out there tends to utilize fat more. Therefore, when you're walking, you're burning off more fat as opposed to when you're running, you're burning off more carbs. Plus, you are far more likely to go on walks multiple times a day or multiple times a week as opposed to going on runs. Exercise doesn't make you live longer. Now, this seems kind of contradictory to everything that you hear about exercise and health. Well, the truth is, it really doesn't. However, you'll be more likely to be higher functioning, happier, and have a much higher quality of life than if you didn't. Meaning it might be possible to feel like you are 50 years old again at the age of 70, which I know for all the young people watching this, it is hard to understand, but if you take a look at your parents or grandparents, I bet you they wish they were 20 years younger again. Your core isn't just your abs. This includes your pelvis, your low back, your hips, and your stomach. These are all important for balance and stability, and a weakness in these may impair how much weight you are able to lift or the efficiency in which you are able to lift that weight. Sarcopenia. This is another fancy word for saying that you start to lose strength and muscle by the age of 30 or so. And this rate starts to increase over time at about age 50 or 60, or just as you get older in general. So continuing to lift weights even into your later years is much better than not doing it at all. Working out breaks down your muscles. So the actual act of working out and when you feel that burn in the gym and you're breathing heavy, that's actually your muscles tearing down. Now this is hard to comprehend because like, well, working out makes me bigger, right? Correct. The act of working out actually tears you down. It is the recovery, the building back up of muscles that make you bigger and stronger. So be sure to properly recover instead of just constantly tearing the muscles down and not letting them fully build back up again. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and click here to watch a video that YouTube thinks you'll like next. Click it, hurry, click it.